What's up YouTube? It's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So today I'm working on my bow a little bit and I'm just trying to make sure that this thing is perfectly in tune. I got it tuned up by the shop. They do an incredible job over at Skull Hill Archery, but you got to take the time to make sure your bow is tuned to the way that you shoot. And so today I'm going to show you guys how I paper tune in my backyard and then how to do a walk back tune. If you use both of these tuning methods, I guarantee you your bow is going to be tuned better than it ever has been before. And you're going to be a more confident archer because of it. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo! What a rush. Money. That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, in here. I saw him go what? down. If you're interested in bow hunting and you live in Florida or maybe even Georgia or Alabama, you might be interested in joining us for an event that we're putting together that's going to be on June 17th. This is going to be the second annual Saddle Hunter Archery Tournament and Workshop. So you can come and try out all kinds of different saddle hunting gear. We've got all the different brands sending in gear that you can try out and at the end of the event we're actually going to be giving it all away. And then there's also a tournament, which, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a 3D archery tournament, but you clip in from a saddle and shoot the targets out of a saddle. It gives you practice for the, the real life hunting situation if you're saddle hunting. And if you don't have a saddle yet and you're just kind of curious about it, don't worry about it. Show up anyway. We've got a bunch of loner saddles that you can use to shoot the tournament. So hopefully we'll see you guys there. It's going to be June 17th. If you want more information about it, go check out our Facebook page. We're going to have all the details on an event page that we'll set up there. So let's get back to the video. So for those of you guys who have been following along, probably already know I got a new bow pretty recently. I love this thing. It's a, an Athens Elevate and I just absolutely love the draw cycle. If you want to see the reasons I picked out this bow, you can watch this video right up here. I'm not going to get into that right now, but what I will say is I've been shooting this bow for uh, a little while now. I've probably put four or 500 arrows through it. Um, I'm really starting to get used to it, but recently I've kind of been noticing that sometimes um, on longer shots, I can see my arrow as it's flying. It'll come, I can see in flight, it'll sort of, it'll be sideways a little bit and then straighten out as it goes. And that, you know, that's pretty typical um, when an arrow is not coming out of your bow perfectly straight. Now, there's two things that could cause that. It could be that the bow is out of tune. And keep in mind, you know, these strings, they do stretch a little bit. So I've taken this to Brandon to have him uh, check that everything is in timing. And it is. It's either I just need to make some micro adjustments to the rest position to get those arrows coming out straight. But it's also entirely possible that I'm torquing the bow. Um, and so before we start adjusting things on the bow, the first thing we need to do is check and see if it's me or if it's the bow. And the way we're gonna do that is through paper tuning. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna show you how I set up this little paper tune thing that I have right here. And instead of paper tuning with a regular arrow that has the fletchings on it, I'm actually gonna use the same exact arrow, but the fletchings are cut off. And so this is what people call bear shaft tuning. And the reason I like to do that when I'm paper tuning is because since there's no fletchings, as it passes through paper, there's a lot less resistance towards, or uh, yeah, resistance to the back of the arrow, which can actually cause the arrow to straighten out a little bit as it passes through. So I find with fletchings, it's a little harder to read the tears in the paper. The first thing that you want to do is we're going to paper tune it. And so I, I made this really cheap sort of paper tuning sit, setup that you can use at home and anybody can do this. You just get some cheap PVC pipe and make yourself like a square frame. Um, and then I just take some tape and uh, I'll set two strips of tape across the top and make sure it's nice and tight.
like that. And then I'll take another strip of tape across the bottom. And again, make sure it is nice and tight. Pull it nice and tight and wrap it on there. Um, and then the next thing I do, this is gonna seem kind of silly, but it's cheap and it works. Um, I like to use wrapping paper. Why? Because wrapping paper is really thin um, and that means that it's not gonna create resistance uh, as that arrow is passing through it. Um, so I've found it gives me good results when I'm paper tuning. So I'm gonna cut a piece out that's gonna fit in this frame. I'm gonna put the red side away from where I'm shooting just so that I'm gonna be able to see the results a lot better. So I'm gonna throw this through there so it doesn't stick down there just yet. I'm gonna stick the top first. that you want to try and do it as flat as possible but it's not perfect it's not the end of the world and then you're gonna to want to pull this tight when you stick it to the bottom so you get a nice tight piece of paper to shoot through so there's a couple of things that are important when you're when you're paper tuning your bow the first is that when you're at full draw you want to make sure that that arrow is able to get out of your bow completely when it hits the paper. You want it to be completely flying on its own. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a step back. And also you wanna make sure that the arrow is able to pass through the piece of paper and into your target behind it um, without uh, still touching the paper because then you'll get some crazy tears. The other thing you wanna make sure of is that the arrow is passing through the paper perpendicular. So I need to angle it up a little bit more uh, which means I'm going to have to um, lower this down just a tad. So let me just do that real quick, and then we'll start again. All right, so now we're ready to rock and roll. So let's start by sending an arrow through and see what we get. And keep in mind, if you have arrows that have spine alignment markings on them, make sure that you're putting the arrow in the same way each time since you now don't have your, your cock vein to tell you which way it's supposed to be pointing. All right, first one. All right, we've got a tear that I do not like. Let me show you what, we, what I'm seeing here. So, this is what we're looking at. And so this is your, the, the fatter part right there, that's where the, um, the, 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 the point went through and it tore down. That means the arrow is coming out angled slightly upward. So I'm gonna shoot a couple more um, and just make sure that that was not like an anomalous result. Cause keep in mind, we are able to, uh, to torque the bow that causes the arrow to do certain things um, and especially with this bow it is a six inch uh, brace height which means it's a little less forgiving so it's a lot more sensitive to those kinds of changes so let's um i'm going to sh shoot a couple more and see what happens yep tore the same way again so if your arrows are consistently tearing through the paper um, in the same direction in the same way that's a good thing because that means that you're not torquing the bow and you're consistent in the way that you're shooting. But it also means that it's probably because your bow is slightly out of tune that your arrows are flying funny. So this means that you're gonna have to figure out how to adjust your rest depending on the tear you get. So here's a little cheat sheet. I, I suggest you take a picture of this uh, so you can keep it with you when you're out there tuning your bow. Uh, but this circular part on, on these tear markers indicates the point of the arrow and then the thinner part um, represents the knock and the shaft and so this tells you which way your arrow is um, leaning or which way it's uh, uh, torqued when it comes out of the bow um, and here's an instruction on how you move the rest or the d loop to fix it so i have shot five times now and the result is that my bow the arrow is coming out 
uh, knock low, so point high, knock low. And to remedy that, we're gonna move the rest ever so slightly. Now the left and right is good, so we need to move the rest up or down. Now think about it, if the point is coming out high, that means that the arrow is leaving the bow um, like the rest is too high. So we're gonna move the, uh, the rest a little bit. All right, so it's important you look at your tick marks on your rest. So I'm using a Ultra Rest um, HDX, the, the quad QAD rest. So you can see the little tick marks there. So I wanna bring it down ever so slightly. And when I say ever so slightly, I'm talking micrometers, tiny, tiny, tiny little amounts. So you want to really pay attention to where it is and then loosen up that screw. That's tightening. There we go. Loosen up the screw and we're going to bring it down. All right, moved it down just a tickle. Let's send another arrow, see if we have fixed the problem. Not yet. Got to move it just a little bit more. All right, we're making a little bit of progress, but it's still not quite there. So uh, been walking it up slowly, and you can see a couple of them. The tear is getting shorter, and finally, we've got a bullet hole. That's what we want right there. So I'm gonna shoot a couple more just to make sure that that's consistent. I got a bullet hole earlier by moving my rest down. Then I move back to three yards and send another one. That's gonna allow that arrow to get out of whack even more. So you're gonna see what it's doing even more clearly. So when I get back to three yards, it was still tearing knock low. I tried to move my rest further down, but I couldn't because as you can see where it is right now, it is hitting the shelf. Um, so I can't go any further down. Um, so what I did is I moved the knock like an eighth of an inch up um, to basically do the same thing to bring that point down lower. I just shot um, up close, got a bullet hole, went back to three yards, and now it's tearing a little bit knock high. So gotta make some minor adjustments until I get it um, at three yards, tearing a perfect bullet hole. And frankly, you probably don't have to go that crazy on it, but I just, I just like for everything to be perfect. So I'm going to get it tearing perfect at three yards and then we're going to step into the next stage of tuning. All right, guys, this is a thing of beauty. Check this out. These are both from three yards. That one right there as well. We've got bullet holes. So the arrows are coming out of the bow perfectly straight. That's step one. Um, now, if you're struggling with this tuning process, just go see Brandon at Skull Hill Archery because he'll paper tune with you at the shop. Um, but personally, I like to do it without fletchings. So bring an arrow without fletchings um, because he usually does it with fletchings. That's his way. This is my way. It is what it is. Um, anyway, so the next step in tuning my bow is going to be the walk back tune. And this is where you really start to figure out those teeny tiny adjustments um, that make a difference, especially when you start getting further back. So I'm gonna teach you how to do the walk back tune. All right, guys. So for the next step in tuning, we're gonna do what's called a walk back tune. Um, and what you're gonna need for this is really simple. Um, you're just gonna need a plumb line. And so I'm using a, a piece of 550 paracord and you could just tie any heavy object to it. I just had a quick link laying around uh, that I tied onto the end of it. And we're gonna attach that in the center of the target here. Um, and you can use whatever target you like to do this. Um, but the most important thing is that you have, you wanna make sure that you have a, uh, a straight up and down line that you can shoot at. Um, and the reason we do that, I mean, you could, Potentially, if you wanted to, you could aim at a central point. But the reason we use a plumb line is because by doing this, um, it makes it so that uh, you don't have to worry so much about aiming up and down 
I'm just trying to hit that line. So all you're worried about is aiming left to right. So that's hanging plumb now. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out by shooting your bow at 10 yards. Um, or you can do 20, uh, but basically what you do is you're gonna, you're gonna shoot close and then you're gonna go further back and shoot as well. And what you're looking for is whether or not the point of impact moves away from that line the further back you get. So I'm gonna shoot at 10 yards, then I'm gonna go back to 30, and then I'm gonna go back to 50. The further back you go, the more deviation you're gonna see, and that's gonna allow you to fine tune it even more. Um, so I'm gonna shoot it at 10 yards, make sure that I'm hitting on the line at 10 yards, and if I'm not, I'm gonna adjust my sight a little bit so that I am, um, and then we're gonna walk further back. So let's do 10 yards first. I think I did a pretty terrible job at explaining this, so let me try again. So this represents your target and the plumb line hanging in front of it, and you can see three impact points of the arrows at 10, 30, and 50 yards. So this is what you actually want to happen. You want all of your arrows to be lined up straight up and down along with that plumb line. If you get a result that looks a little bit more like this, uh, this is actually not that bad because they're still straight up and down. They're just off centered a little bit. And that just means that you need to move your sight a little bit to get them centered again. So if you get this result, that's actually a pretty good thing. But what you're more likely to get is something that looks a little bit more like this. And so as you can see, the further back you go, the more your arrow starts to walk its way to one side or the other. It could be left or right. But basically what this means is your arrow is not coming out of the bow straight and in order to fix it you're going to have to move your rest in this particular case you're going to have to move it to the left um, if it was walking down the other way you'd move it to the right um, and i you just keep doing this until you get them hitting straight up and down and you can actually also do a walk back tune for the other axis with up and down but you need to figure out a way to get that line to be level so you can just use a regular old carpenter's level to make sure you're pinning both sides of that line so it's perfectly perpendicular to your plumb line. All right, I'd say that's right on the money. I literally drilled the arrow through the line. So uh, I'd say at 10 yards, I'm right on. Uh, so now we're gonna back it up uh, go 30 and then 50. I'd say at 30 yards, I am right on the money because I hit the damn line again. It's crazy. I swear I usually don't shoot this good. I think I'm pretty good at 30, but I'm gonna shoot just a couple more times, just to be sure. <clears throat> well, <laughs> that was from 50 yards. First shot drilled it straight into the, the string. I swear, I'm usually not this good of a shot. I don't know what the heck is going on. Um, anyway, I guess we'll keep going. Ridiculous. All right. I'd say 50s looking pretty good too. I'm, I'm gonna do a couple more just to make sure. All right, we're gonna ignore that one. We're gonna ignore this one. Both of those, when when the shot broke, um, I just wasn't really on target. These two uh, felt like. Good shots though, um, and you know one of them's a little bit to the left, the other one's a little bit to the right. Um, I'm gonna send a few more just to be sure, um, but as long as they're kind of grouping on either side of this string, I'm feeling pretty confident that the arrows are coming out of my bow clean and straight. Um, and one thing I immediately noticed is I'm no longer seeing that arrow do that, that like wobble as it's flying, uh, which is telling me that they are coming out of the the bow straight so I think doing that little paper tune that I did um, probably fixed the issue which means from now on if I see my arrow doing something funny as it's flying through the air 
that's because of me. That's because I torqued it on the shot, not because the bow is out of tune. So it's good if you're having if you're having struggles shooting. Um, it's good to check and make sure your bow is in tune, um, just to sort of eliminate that. Then you kind of know that you're the problem, not the bow. So. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if you haven't checked your bow in a while, and even if you've taken it to your shop, you know, keep in mind, Brandon at Skull Hill Archery, he is great at tuning a bow, better than most shops, but it's always a good idea to do your own tune just to make sure, because the fact is that you shoot your bow just a little bit differently than everybody else, and that's gonna make a difference in how that bow torques coming out of your hand. And as long as you can torque the bow consistently, or not torque it at all, um, you know, then those arrows are gonna fly the same way each time. So take your time and do this test. Um, it's gonna make you more confident in the way your bow shoots um, and make it more efficient at killing animals, and that's really the part that matters. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do it now, and uh, go check us out on Instagram. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.